What's up guys, thanks for tuning in. Uh, today, I'm gonna to show you the process I went through to diagnose uh, our microwave when it started blowing the fuse. Um, we had an issue with it a couple months ago. I thought I had it resolved. And then uh, here, a few weeks ago, had another issue with it, um, different problem. So, I'll show you kind of what I did to go through, diagnose it, um, and then what I did for a temporary repair. So, I don't have the finished, completed repair on it, but I did figure out a uh, kind of a workaround to kind of rig it up so that if this happens to you uh, and your microwave quits working or starts blowing the fuse, you can check it. If you're having the same issue I was having, then you'll be able to do this fix and uh, at least make your microwave convection oven at least operable again uh, until you get the parts to fix it. So basically what happened uh, about three to four months ago, our display on the microwave kept shutting off. Every time we would open the door, when we would shut it, the display would go blank, it would trip the breaker. So I reset the breaker a couple times, and then it finally went out, did not trip the breaker, but the display still wouldn't come back on. Um, I did a little bit of research, I found out there's a fuse up here in the top of the microwave. When I checked it, that fuse was completely burnt out. I put a new fuse in, popped it immediately when I tried to open and shut the microwave. So, did a little more research and I found out that the switch holder, there's three switches on the microwave door and we'll show you that in a few minutes. That switch holder can sometimes get uh, worn and allow those switches to move and if all three of those switches don't make contact the way they're supposed to, then it will either trip the breaker or blow the fuse. So, my solution at the time was to shim the switch holder up with a couple washers so that everything lined back up good. Uh, and we've had no problems with it the whole time until today. So, started with the same deal. Tripped the breaker, I reset the breaker, and then it finally blew the fuse uh, the next time I tried to open and shut the door. So, I'm going to show you guys what the inside this looks like. Since we made that repair um, a few months back, we've seen a lot of people asking, about how to repair it, how to fix the microwave, uh, they're having the same issue. So we'll show you what all this looks like and uh, show you what we do to try to try to get this fixed. So in our rig we have the Furion microwave convection oven combo. Uh, very very common in across a lot of different manufacturers uh, and this is one that Grand Design uses in many 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 of their uh, of their rigs. So first thing you're going to need to do is access the fuse. So the fuse is located up in the top up here. So the microwave, that's what it's gonna look like. To access that, you're gonna to have to pop this off. Uh, these clips are very, very tight. You're gonna to have to get, get a screwdriver behind there to get it to pop loose. Uh, when I popped ours loose the first time, a couple of the, one of the clips on this end broke off. I mean, it doesn't take a whole lot to hold it in there. So, you know, as long as you have some, at least one of the clips left on there, it'll snap back in place just fine. Um, from there, you're gonna see this little, this little metal piece up here. It's gonna have two screws. You're gonna take those two screws out, and then that's gonna give you access back here to where the fuse is. Right here is where your fuse is gonna be located. I've already got ours out, but I'll set it back in there. So there's where the fuse sits. I've got the microwave unplugged, uh, the plug for the microwave is inside your cabinet right here so you can just reach through there unplug the microwave make sure you kill the power on it so you have no you know no power running into this you can work on it without fear of electrocuting yourself so the fuse that comes in it originally is just a clear glass fuse uh, when i did this repair last time i put in an actual microwave fuse they're more heat resistant and uh, they don't break down as much as a regular glass fuse does so this is obviously blown, so I picked up uh, another one of these that we'll replace after we get the switches squared away. Your switches are gonna be located behind this panel. 
So you're going to take the panel off. You're going to remove this screw up top. Uh, once you remove that screw, you better pick this panel up and take it down. So after you take the screw out, you're going to push up on your little control panel. Just push up on the panel and then it'll come right out. So you can see we've got uh, some plugs and some wiring that we need to unplug to get our switch panel, uh, our control panel off. So I'm going to use my phone. I'm going to take a picture of the back of this. That way I can get all these plugs back in the right spot when I put the panel back on. So I'm going to make sure that I can see where all the wires go. And then just take a picture of it. I think I jinxed myself because I actually just deleted the picture off my phone of the last time I did this. So once you have the picture taken, you can go ahead and pull all these plugs off without worrying about trying to figure out which relays and everything they go they go back on. So that, that's what that looks like. I'm gonna set that aside. Here are your switches. Um, there's one, two, three switches. So you can see how, if you can see it in the video, but you can see how all those switches are kind of, that holder just doesn't, isn't like super secure in there. And the switches kind of have some movement in them. They move around. First thing I'm gonna do to make sure we don't have a switch issue is I'm gonna unplug and then I'm gonna take my voltmeter and I'm gonna check continuity on those. Make sure we don't have any switches uh, open that are supposed to be closed and vice versa. I'm gonna shut the door and double check them again to make sure our switches are all right. So last time our issue was the switch holder. So you can see the switch holder through the cutouts in the metal. It was pushed way over to the right. So I use these little flat washers right in here in between the metal frame of the microwave and the switch holder just to shim it over a little bit just to make everything make good contact. I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and take this holder out so I can show you what the switch holder looks like. It's only two screws and then the whole switch holder will come out. So I'm going to take it out. You just remove these two little screws right here. So once you get the screws out, you just pick up on the switch holder, pick it up, and you can remove it. And that's your switch holder. So the two microwave door latches come in here. This is what your microwave door latches onto. And when it does, it closes all these switches so that the microwave knows the door is shut. All right, so now we're going to test these switches. So clamp my meter I have it on the ohms setting so we're gonna check continuity through this switch so when I'm gonna reach in here I'm gonna push down the switch and see if we have continuity all right we do that switch seems to be all right move to the next one so that one has continuity and then we should be able to hit the switch it should go off So that's a normally closed switch. And then when we, when the microwave door comes through and closes, or opens that switch. Up here. And this one you can reach with your hand on the back. So the switches seem to be all right, um, but you can see the issue is how loose these switches are. I mean, you can see how much they move around. So it would not, it does not take much if this holder moves around at all. It's definitely going to cause an issue with the door making contact properly. Good. There's one 
not working. That's the one. Work that time. It doesn't work every time. So that's the problem switch. Let's check this top one. When we had it out and we bench tested it, we had no issues with that switch. So that one's fine too. So this middle switch is our issue. So this switch that we're having an issue with is this middle one. And there's the button for it. So this one just goes in and presses. Uh, it just presses that switch in makes contact. So that's all it does. So obviously this goes in and just pushes right against that switch. And I can see right here looking in from the side, you can see the button on the switch. Open the door. So it's just barely shut it. Barely touching that switch. Alright, so what I've done, I came in here with some electrical tape and just wrapped it around the, so that's what it normally looks like. I put a few wraps of electrical tape because all I need is to push that switch in a little bit further. So, here we go. There you go. Alright, so now I'm going to plug everything back in, put our new fuse in, plug the microwave in, see what happens. So those are the fuses that we're going to be using. Um, I'm actually just going to use one of these. It only takes one. Put it right up here. We got our new fuse in. Now we're going to come in here and plug the microwave in. That's a good sign. It's a good sign. So that's what would happen before. I would trip the breaker, I would reset it, I would open it, and as soon as I closed it, it would go out. So that is definitely what our issue was. That's it. Um, I'm going to unplug the microwave, put this all back together up here, and uh, that's it. We all set. All right, so there you have it. I mean, that's um, obviously not a permanent fix, not a permanent solution. But if you put some tape around that uh, arm so that it closes that switch all the way like it's supposed to, then you'll at least be able to use your microwave. Uh, the correct repair for this is probably going to end up being a new switch holder. And also, um, I mean, if we're going that far to take everything out, might as well get new switches. Um, I mean, they're not that expensive. You're going to have everything out. So I think what we're going to do is just go ahead and put a new switch holder new switches in there and then put it all back together and then we won't have to use the tape anymore. But um, it does work and you know there's no heat down there, uh, there's no heat that gets to that spot where the tape's at or anything like that. So there's no danger of, of anything, you know, the tape melting or anything like that. Um, you know, and it would work for quite a while that way, but eventually, I mean it's tape, so it could work off, you know, work off the arm or you know something like that and then you'll end up blowing the fuse again. But definitely a great temporary fix. So, you know, if you're under this problem, you need a quick fix, give us a shot. We appreciate you guys watching, and we'll catch you guys down the road.